ba, ba, ba. I'm back. I had the wrong microphone on. I get it. Oh, there I am. So that one. Sexy. Ah, that one. Sexy. The Penn, Ohio Backyard Bungalow Radio Show, brought to you by G&J Fencing. The other microphone I just discovered, that's where that, that uh, flutter, I oh, think, was coming from, because the cord is bad. Interesting. And we have a new toy. Nice. Sound effects. I'm just kidding. Um, boing. So Kyle from G&J Fencing. Yes. Has, has faith in what we're doing. It's funny, he called me about a week ago and he started, we were talking about marketing of businesses. They're a uh, fencing company and they also carry Yeti products and the Ooh. Big Green Egg and Broil King and nice. all kinds of cool stuff in Transfer, Pennsylvania. I like that. Um, anyway. I own a smoker. <clears throat> well, you have a smoker? Yes, I uh, do. Big Green Egg? No. 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 I've got a guy. You got a guy. <laughs> Have you ever used one? I have never used an egg. Cooking I've... and ceramic. Talk about low and slow. Oh, I'm all about low and slow. Yeah. Mm. And they and they, you can use In, them all year round. On many levels. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Kyle has um, agreed um, to help us here uh, and uh, in exchange for... Um, a sponsorship of this, and he's going to be in here at some point chatting with me. He's in Florida. You know, they're one of those. Get get through the holidays and then go yeah. on a nice vacation. I, oh, God, I don't know what that word means. Although, to be fair, this is probably the first vacation he's taken in years. I need one, but I have seven cats and two dogs, and I haven't found a trustworthy house sitter who would take responsibility for nine animals for a week and uh, you have children one is in college and one is only 15 and i'm not sure if he is at the level of responsibility. you know what i was doing when i was 15 oh, you don't know my ex-wife but we're not gonna <laughs> go there so anyway we do have a new piece of studio equipment although i'm still learning it it's the roadcaster pro 2 very nice and those microphones which are not road microphones but they're zoom mics um it was a package it was i've been looking for a year at this package and the nice thing about those is is that those eq in just about as nice as this re27 very nice so and this is also going to be our portable road kit Oh, looking forward to going on the road. Mm -hmm. And we may have an event coming up here in February. Yes, we have discussed that. Uh, how, do you, how do you feel about midget wrestling? As long as it is not mentioned in front of my wife, I feel wonderful about it. Okay. My wife has a phobia about the little person. So this is interesting. This is going to make for interesting conversation right out of the gate because I had a friend. Um, when I lived in Huntsville, Alabama, a young lady, mm -hmm. a much younger than, than me, just, just a friend right. that was the complete and total opposite. She had a real thing for, and was constantly seeking out and traveling to go find little people. Yeah. It sounds a little kinky. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I, well, or uh, I should, I, I don't know if we would say kinky nowadays. I think we would just say a particular type. Okay. <laughs> it was beyond infatuation, I guess we're yes, saying. Yes, that okay. was her thing. She really... Almost to the point of obsession. I, I think she was just weighing out all of her options. She ended up marrying a smaller man, a man who was smaller than her, but not an actual little person. But the smaller, the cuter she found them, the more... Diminutive. Yeah, desirable. <laughs> okay. She found them. No. So your wife is afraid. Oh, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Okay. Quaker Steak and Lube. Back when I used to do St. Patrick's Day every year. Right. A number, I mean, this is probably when I first started dating her post-divorce and her and I hooked up and started seeing each other. I was doing St. Patrick's Day at the, in Thunder Alley upstairs where I had been doing it for over almost 20 years. 
It was one of the la- one of the close to one of the last ones I did before they stopped having me do it. And when they were going through all their transitions with the sale and Jig and Gary got out of it and sold it, and to those guys in Columbus and everything went to shit. But this was one of our last big St. Patrick's Day events, and I'm doing my karaoke show after a day's day full of Irish music and. All of a sudden, in the audience, as we're doing karaoke and the place is packed, I see a little person dressed as a leprechaun. Oh, good. It's even better. Yeah. So, um, as the evening wears on, I kind of don't say she doesn't see him. And during the show because it was so busy and she's sitting over on a side table away from most of the crowd because she didn't want to deal with all the craziness i was dealing with he comes up to me and wants to was thinking about singing a song and he i bend down to talk to him and i go (laughs) that was back when i had songbooks i go here's a songbook i go there's a my girlfriend is sitting over there. Go over there and she will help you pick out a song. <laughs> so he moseys over and she's like doing something, maybe playing with her phone or just doing whatever. And she's sitting there by herself and all of a sudden he walks up to her and he hops on a chair next to her. And if you could see the look in her eye and the like the the fear and the uh and I'm I'm up on stage and I look at her and I'm just laughing my ass <laughs> off. Because he's trying to talk to her, and she's trying to talk to him without running away screaming because she's got this massive, massive phobia. And so she didn't talk to me for about a week after that incident because she was so mad. What were Santa and his elf experiences like? <laughs> oh, I can imagine. But no, I don't know where, uh, how it developed, or where she, where it came from. But on this, no, I don't. Hmm. There's a backstory. Well, I'm wondering. There's got to be a backstory to uh, it. One day I'll have to get into it. But she doesn't even like to talk about. Okay. It. Clowns. I have an issue with clowns. Oh, it's interesting. Yeah, but not to the point that I have to run out of the room. But mm-hmm. I'm always, always very uncomfortable around. 85, 90% clowns. Right. Yeah. And my dad, I, it has nothing to do with my childhood because my dad, I remember him painting, making a, a toy box for me when I was really little. I had a big clown's face on it and I liked it. I liked that. But actually going, I mean, I like the antics of a clown and I enjoyed as a kid going to the circus and seeing right. the clowns. But when the clown got near me, they made me very, very uncomfortable. Hmm. Interesting. I would have never gone near John Wayne Gacy. No, I, and I, I wasn't I his to, type anyway. I used to love the circus because uh, back when I was little, the Ott Marai Grotto Circus used to come to the Struthers Field House every mm-hmm. year and do this. I mean, the full blown circus, elephants, trapeze, everything. Cause the, and my mom and dad used to take me and my little brothers to that circus every year and i just was enthralled by the entire experience i love the circus i um so we've talked about this before um but i i, I it, 80% of the television and media that i watch is educational pretty much these days and that way anything i watch entertaining um is true entertainment but um during covid I got really into watching documentaries in the history of the circus in this country. Nice. And there's a really great documentary I'd love to show you. Did you know that Ringling Brothers um, came from a town, I can't think of the town now, but it was in north of Kenosha, Wisconsin, which is where my son lives, is in Kenosha. I actually found out about it when I started um, researching when he and his wife uh, move from Pittsburgh to Wisconsin. Okay. And then I, that was how it sort of all started. This was a number of years ago. And then I found out that Ringling Brothers was in this town, uh, north of that area. And, uh, yeah, all season, and they would come off the road into the winter season and they would house the elephants and all those exotic animals. And the whole town was set up to take care of. And then they finally eventually moved around the turn of the century to, uh, Florida. 
And it gets into the whole thing about the railroad systems and what the railroad had to go through and what they went through. I mean, and the, the, the size of the tent. Some of those circuses were several city blocks. Oh, I can imagine. Back in the day. Yeah. But uh, fascinating. P.T. Barnum is another one of those individuals of Americana that just absolutely fascinates me. I can imagine. I love, I, 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 that was the first true American entertainment form, especially traveling. Sure. The original, the, the original Taylor Swift. Oh, boy. How about that? A lot of money. Now you A lot of hardship for the circus people, too. Last time I was at a circus was in the parking lot of the Southern Park Mall, This is or Eastwood Mall. This is going back a few years ago. And there were a bunch of overweight children holding signs that said they were, you know, protesting the circus. And I remember one girl having a sign that said, animals are people, too. Oh, boy. <laughs> Welcome to our new society. Although I understand to an extent some in some situations, but uh, I don't I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I want to. I'd rather have more of a circus expert here and have conversations with. Mm. I met the dude um, who was the doctor, the dude with the ponytail from the Tiger King. Oh, geez. I met him when I lived in Huntsville. Nice. And he was a character. With He had three attractive female assistants with him and he was about it is colorful and and swarmy yeah and you know it was one of those get in show me your animals okay that's a nice bow constrictor thanks for coming goodbye yeah (laughs) it wasn't jack hannah no it was not so how was your holiday um my holiday was wonderful you know christmas eve italian seven fishes Mm mm-hmm I will uh, give you a uh, little tip that I'd like to pass on to all our listeners that if you're going to fry smelts like I do every year for Christmas, don't do it in the house. Do it outside. Go do it in the garage, Ed. (laughs) So we've been burning (laughs) candles all week because my house smells like a fish market. Yeah. It's a, it's a wonderful thing to wake up to if you're Italian and it brings back the taste of that smelt from five days ago. But, or a lesbian. Ooh, hey, hey, now, 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 now. Uh, speaking of uh, low and slow. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, I understand. But it, it, was, it was good, you know. And then, uh, of course, I spend the day before Christmas Eve and Christmas Eve doing my homemade wedding soup Mm -hmm. that I I do from scratch, my old grandmother's recipe. I make my own chicken stock. I I use fresh escarole, boil it down. Uh, I roll, I have a meatball recipe that is amazing, and I roll my little tiny uh, half half a tablespoon of, I have my little measuring spoon. All my meatballs are exactly half a tablespoon. I roll them by hand. Mm -hmm. I made five hundred meatballs nice because i make enough wedding soup that i can give out right some quarts to friends and he, family he brought me a quart we were talking about it the other day and i beth ann so I know. my emotional support companion beth ann is um and and i love her to death sometimes i get a little criticism for calling her that every time i say it she laughs out loud she loves it i wasn't sure how that would, did go over I'm oh, glad, she, i'm glad it went over well she gets it i know they they published it when i said that to a reporter this oh, past it, it, year it, it in, went into in print one of the local newspapers oh yeah a caption oh. you know the two of us together and then it said you know oh it did not my name and his emotional support companion. Are you kidding me? <laughs> we loved it. Um, a couple of people weren't real happy. I'm I don't sure. Think. I am sure. They were polite to me about it. But mm-hmm. People that you either get me or you don't. I don't know. You know. The sensitivity level of our society right now is like, you know. <laughs> Beth Ann is. Can you imagine George Carlin being alive right now? Oh, we need more. We I know need we do. George Carlin. I always so do. Uh, well, Chappelle. Oh, yeah. But anyway, before we get off track, um, Beth Ann is Italian, and she was really struggling with, she wanted to make um, wedding soup this this year. However, um, she doesn't know how to make it, you know, small. I I forget what her minimum amount is, but it's huge. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, I 
called you and I said, you know, I know that you make your world famous wedding soup. So he brought us a quart today. I can't wait to sample it. And then that'll be, we'll have that conversation. There's already a little bit of controversy. There's controversy. Pastina. I've had yours. Pastina. No, 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 I'm no. just not that much of a purist in uh, any sense of the form. I'm making the sign of the cross right now. And I've seen yours. And I've, I mean, I've had yours before in, in years past. You, you served me a bowl one year. Yes. And it's delicious. It's Thank absolutely you. outstanding. But she's a little, she's already what? She, the, yeah, she lifted up the jar and noticed the, I mean, the container and noticed there was no pastina in it. And she said something. I said, no. But yeah, that, that, I think that's a bridge her and I aren't going to meet in the middle on. But she's, that's okay. She's so Italian that she sharpens ice picks as a hobby. There you go. Ooh, nice. <laughs> I'm liking that. That's a very good. That's very good. Oh. But the wedding soup came out great. I also made baklava because I am half Greek, so I made baklava. And uh, I've been told I should sell it. It's amazing. It's that good. It's, it's beautiful. I have mastered my. I've taken my Yaya's recipe that is on uh, on a literal index card, and I have. Uh, I don't know how you get that tweaked puff. it over well, I, the years. I guess I do know you stack it, but your puff pastry is so yeah thick. Uh-huh. I mean, it tall, yeah, tall, it, not yeah. the I know the individual layers. Right. I don't. I. I. It's. It's a process, and that takes some work. Yeah. It's a. It's a. You don't do anything. No. The between the wedding soup and the baklava, the very labor intensive recipes, both of them, but it's worth it. It's. It's Christmas, mm-hmm. and that's part of my. My heritage that I grew up on, that there are certain things you do every year, no matter how hard it is. Like, uh, I mean, every time I start, every time I, I mean, I made pizzelles this year. I got up my grandma's old pizzelle recipe, and because uh, my wife bought me a pizzelle iron years ago, and I, I make pizzelles. And the traditional with the anise. No, I don't do. I am I am anti anise. Okay, I I know I that's yeah. I, no, the, the anise was never. My grandmother never used it in hers either. We were just. I mean, there's a lot of Italians right. that want the anise in it. And I know if you go to Jimmy's Italian uh, shop over there on Belmont Avenue on the north side of Youngstown, he sells uh, homemade. I don't know what company it is, but they are homemade pizzelles mm-hmm. and. They have both types now. They don't just sell one type of pizzelle. There's anise and there's vanilla, and you know you have one or the other. And there's two, just like the pastina issue, which is could can is argumentative even within the Italian community. Pastina in wedding soup, there is the anise, no anise pizzelle factions, mm-hmm. and that's just the way it is. Pizzelles are um, Italian. Oh yeah. I thought so, and Absolutely. I always found it interesting, and I've never asked anybody why, because it's um, it's a staple in Western Pennsylvania. You think of this area being predominantly Dutch and German. Hmm. I mean, we have our Italian, and I, sure. I guess it's just because of the neighborhoods and over time and families that it's it's. But I've grown up with pizzelles. I mean, my whole life, I've yeah. never seen a Christmas that, right. and it's a popular item on, um, which is not very Italian protestant cookie tables sure <laughs> you always see but sells. but it's like i don't know what it, what it is with these greeks and their cookies and the uh labor intensive you know it's like i mean uh there, there's a, a cookie called Phoenicia <clears throat> that i made that is in your little cookie mm-hmm. box i made you that is uh you know you start off with this big um bowl of dough and you roll these cookies into little balls shaped like eggs and and then they melt down so you think the cookie is done but no you take the cookie out of the oven you let them cool and then you make a syrup over on the side and then you take that cookie after it cools off and then you dip the cookies in the syrup with the honey and the little a little uh little bit of lemon and you soak them in there and then you throw the cookie back on a thing and then you sprinkle walnuts on it so yeah i mean my god it's like there's a lot of work that goes into that that cookie you like legos too don't you oh, i love legos. don't get me <laughs> so we could do a whole podcast on legos and we might have to one day i get it I you get know it. i had a lego room for my kids Upstairs. I did not know that. Our but my bonus room in my house was a Lego room for my children. It was shelves full of everything. 
I still have all my all of all of them. I have. You should see my basement. It's every once in a while I I have to force myself into trying to shut my brain down. And one afternoon I found myself engrossed in a two hour program of watching some dude. I think he was in Iceland who had converted his whole basement and was building a Lego town from scratch. Oh, I can. And he was using all these new, and Lego kept sending him bags. Oh, yeah. And so part of the village would get torn down, and he'd put up a dock, and he's always showing off each piece that he would use. And, right. But it was completely from scratch. It was not one of these kind of kit It wasn't things. a kit, Rose yeah. And wow. It was fascinating. I might need to find that. I, yeah. I would watch I'll find that. it and send it to you. Please do. It really is good. I kept watching for pictures of him because it was it was shot over a three year period and mm -hmm. it was like part one, and it was all a condensed three year oh, yeah. period. And I wanted to see from beginning to end. I I got to go back and look at it. Well, a couple of the few vacations I took when my kids were very little was down to Florida to go to Legoland. Yeah, and now there's a Legoland in Chicago. Oh, okay. Which I also took my kids to when they were getting a little bit older, pre growing out of the Lego phase. And before the Wii hit in the Xbox mm -hmm. and the PlayStation, and my kids became gamers. Legos were our life mm -hmm. pre video game. And it's so, it's, it's family oriented. You sit there and there, you know, you have to follow instructions and there, and you watch that thing start from one brick. And there's a thousand bricks that later you have this, you have an X Wing fighter or the Millennium Falcon or, you know, we, we were really into the Star Wars Legos because I'm a, well, that's a whole other podcast of Star Wars. Oh, God, I love my Star Wars. But, and, uh, but yeah, Legos. I mean, I bought my one, my college son last year. They have a more advanced Lego sets called Technics. Yeah. And yeah, they're yeah, even yeah, yeah. more intense and they have <clears throat> moving the parts, robotics. Yeah. moving parts and stuff. And I got him a Bugatti. Of like a, and it's oh like, yeah, the car. Yeah, I know, and it's I like an amazing is. piece of uh, engineering. Once it's finished, right? You know, the engine, the pistons move, and the wheels, the uh, yeah, the axles turn, and the transmission spin. And it's just, it doesn't roll. It doesn't. Uh, you can't. It's not radio controlled or anything. But it's it, the mechanics are just ridiculous. My brothers are very very gadgety. I'm I'm not. I get really frustrated. My brothers though are are really really good at that stuff. My youngest brother used to fly RC planes and helicopters and build them and stuff like that. Oh yeah. Um I when we were kids talking about holidays and Christmas memories. When we were kids, my parents had um converted the basement into a rumpus room with orange and I remember it was like orange and burgundy checked carpeting and paneling on the walls. Oh, and, you know what? It, I don't want to sidebar real quick. Okay. Wood paneling on oh, yeah. walls. Come on. Yeah. Bring it back. I, there's nothing wrong with it. My mother, our living room in my house, I grew up in beautiful wood paneling. No paint. Not to mention, if you have a little bit of an imagination, if you have old paneling that looks like dirt, I mean, it, it doesn't look good, it really does paint nicely. Uh -huh. You can actually, I mean, you got to put a little work into it, but it uh -huh. does. It looks, I like painted paneling. Yeah. Oh no! I, but I prefer the old. Oh, I, I keep kicking really? around the idea about this place and making it really look like a '70s rumpus room. Oh, that would be beautiful. I keep bouncing from that to boho to tiki, so somehow yeah. it'll probably all end up being yeah, combined. But how to go go bungalow with wood paneling? I don't know. Oh you, sure. Why not? Why not? In the why corner, not? have a go go dancer cage. Oh, mm, brass pole. But we've got to do it at geriatric go-go dancer cage though and have handrails <laughs> oh, well, we're about at that point well that's what i'm thinking that's what i'm thinking too you know i don't want i i want people to live a little life that have already lived it it is very good exercise yes yes hence the ping pong table that's where i was going with my uh the rumpus room we had an area of the basement that was just big enough to get a ping pong table in and you only had less than three feet behind you from another wall oh wow and then an open area and then the sides you could just get by to get back to play yeah and so we grew up playing the walls playing the ceiling because oh, nice. the ceiling was oh, only yeah. about six and a half feet and um it's like arena football yeah so i've inherited here over the holidays the family ping pong table which we will definitely break in here in mm -hmm. the near future 
I haven't played ping pong in years. We had one in my garage, one of those ones that folded mm-hmm. up so you could put it against the back of the garage. Yeah, this one does too. Yeah, very nice. It will. I love that. So, um, my holiday was uh, well, my my son and daughter in law are here. They'll be leaving tomorrow. They're actually going to Lancaster for a party, and then they're going to Jamestown, New York, where my um, my daughter in law's work is based out of. Okay. So they're they're kind of on an excursion. They've been here for almost a week. Very nice. And um, I got to spend a lot of time. The grandkids are just getting huge. I'll show you pictures. Very good. But um, that's been beautiful. But it's been a bittersweet. Um, started off the holiday. You know, John Luminati, who's my coroner buddy, who also does this podcast. He does has been doing coffee talkie with me. And uh, just a terrific guy and a good friend. And found out on Friday morning that his... Uh, daughter who's been troubled um she passed away of a drug overdose thursday evening terrible, friday morning terrible and so that's been uh he's a remarkable man he wrote a beautiful beautiful um tribute and a, it made it a christmas message and um it's been shared all over facebook and uh media's picking up on it you know that kind of a thing but um it's yeah so we've been we've been dealing and trying to just be as supportive he was here he came over with our family uh christmas eve which is really nice he and his wife very nice and um we were together last night and had a bunch of laughs it's hard to find joy in tragedy and some people can still do that yeah he's done i mean it's been hard don't get me wrong but i mean it certainly hasn't um um, stopped him from doing his job and even cementing more about some of his values and beliefs and what he wants to do in this community. And um, it's 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 a remarkable, sometimes it can be a remarkable experience to uh, to witness. Supporting people with mental health issues is something that yeah. I, I find uh, illuminating because, you know, with my journey with sobriety. Oh, we both have struggled with our own. Oh, yeah. I continue to struggle. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah. Um, And then the other side of it is, um, so it just juxtapositioned right up against that, is that my dad is celebrating his 90th birthday. Very good. My dad just turned 87 in the beginning of December, so we're all in that. So, and it's been been really uh, fun. He's enjoyed it. Uh, He got up the next day and said, I don't feel a, a bit different. Yeah. You know. My dad's a little bit of a hypochondriac. Every little ache and pain, he thinks he has to run to the hospital and get a brain scan or a, an MRI. Or My dad needed um, needs a new hip, needed a new hip two years ago and refuses. And we've all discussed it, I mean, extremely maturely and gone through over the pros and the cons. He uses a cane. He's very, very careful. Mm-hmm. Let's my mom drive. Nice. My, I'm blessed that my folks are in such good health. Yeah. And uh, dad's really still, I mean, everything's there. I mean, uh, everything. And they're both so active, and they're active in their church. Yeah, that's excellent. It's cool. Yeah, I miss my mom. My mom had health issues because of her diabetes and didn't take care of it, like, and had some strokes. And then I we lost my mom five years ago, right before Christmas. Yeah. And so it's, it's, it's tough. Christmas takes on a whole different, I understand how people could really lose it and get down, but you kind of, it, it's a, I'm finding that at this age, Christmas is becoming more of an exercise. It's a, you know, you really have to set your mind and your spirit and everything into the, you know, it, it, for me personally, I mean, it's real easy to go to the dark side and to get down and to, and to, and to be depressed about it. Well, yeah, because we're in that age bracket now where our parents are very elderly and having to deal with mm-hmm. their stuff. Our children are grown and, you know, are becoming responsible adults with their own issues. Sure. And then, of course, we have our own personal issues. And then you have to balance those. You have to juggle the emotions of children, parents, yourself, and find a way to, like... And expectations. Yeah, because, like, my, my wife, her daughter was going to come home from Texas for Christmas and then two weeks before Christmas did a U-turn and decided not to. And Mm -hmm. my wife was all pumped up and uh, she had to deal with that disappointment. I mean, the reasons her daughter decided not to come home were viable and reasonable. Sure. 
and we understood, but also she, she was pumped up and had gifts purchased. It's a whole and, lot of energy pumped. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah, invested. Yeah. Sure. And then, boom, you got to re, you know, do a U turn and, and then deal with that. But it ended up still being a great Christmas all the way around. I, I'm not complaining at all I nor am i no nor am i no I, i'm still eating i i have put on weight though oh my god i'm ridiculous i i, I have uh i'm hitting back towards that michael moore uh, I, I call i call <laughs> my i call mine santa belly that's a good one i like that because it does i don't look like i gained weight anywhere but in my gut mm -hmm. and that hap starts around thanksgiving and then you start baking and things and the cookies and the and, and then you're constantly checking your sugar because I woke up this morning, my sugar was 159. I'm going, Dad, what are you doing? Get out of the cookie box. I look like some sort of a bowling pin from the Big Lebowski. I, 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 I enjoy your shape. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> as long as I am bringing joy in one you, way you or bring, another. You bring so much joy. I put the 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 jelly jiggle, yeah, in Santa. I know. Um, although I've been uh, doing laps in this place you, every morning, I'm doing 25, which is roughly comes out to about a quarter of a mile. Excellent. And I'm trying to do that a couple times a day. Mm -hmm. Punky was kind of following me around for a while. He gave up on uh, it. I, I bet he did. He just no. I don't understand. You're going in a circle. I've been on this very anti-exercise kick because ever since my shoulder surgery last year i just not i haven't been able to do a lot of the things i used to do and now i i i need to i don't want to use the words new year's resolution cuz we all know that's bullshit cuz we all say it and then do it for a short period of time and then it disappears but i really in the new year now that my shoulder is fully recovered and i have no excuses anymore well and i'm in the perfect location to be outside walking oh and there is, this is no beautiful around here there's no reason why i'm not putting on tennis shoes and going outside and taking advantage of this weather mm -hmm. this global warming right exactly global warming yeah you believe that <clears throat> oh, oh, well, to an extent 59 on christmas day yeah i mean 59. it's definitely different than when i was a kid i, I know i mean well, that's another whole well, well these are we have many many topics that we can always discuss oh, yeah. yeah but um speaking of our new year you have a couple of shows coming up this weekend. Oh, yeah. I have a brand new Simply Ed pop-up show, which, you know, the my Saturdays are, the way my Saturdays work, every other Saturday I'm at Double Bogies and Borman at the Southern Park Mall. So I have opposite Saturdays where I'm off, unless, of course, I'm DJing a wedding. But we've been making an effort to find one-off gigs and you decided and you helped me with this idea to call them pop-up yeah, shows. Yeah, just call them pop-up shows. I Something love it. that's out of the ordinary. Exactly. And Even though we pre-promote the things as pop-up shows, but that's what they are. Yeah. And I'm doing one uh, tomorrow night in New Middletown, Ohio. I'm excited to hear how this goes. At the Tiger's Table. Yeah. Now, I've, I went ahead and did a little research here over the last month or so and started looking that they've actually been doing entertainment. I yes, think they I have. even heard a couple of conversations on WKBN about them talking about different things going on. Interesting. Well, I miss, I miss um, Dan Ryan. Oh, Dan. There will be nobody, nobody that remembers, probably listening to this, that remembers Dan Ryan on WKBN radio. My mom loved him. Dan Ryan and oh, well, we we were down last night at the Tiger's Table restaurant, and let me tell you, they they know how to make a pork chop. I take that and just a glass of my aloe vera juice. <laughs> I love Dan Ryan. Uh, I used to call and prank his show all the time. Oh, really? Yeah, that's fun. I used to call. Remember the I used to do Carl from East Palestine. It's Carl, Carl uh, from East Palestine. I forgot about that from the old radio days. I used to yeah. call him and say, you know, he was hanging out down by the plasma center, and he was gathering up cigarette butts and selling them back to the homeless. Nice. And he would get all so upset. Yes. You know, Carl, why don't you find something better to do? Yeah. I like oh, that. why not? <laughs> cigarette butts are half smoked. <laughs> homeless seem to love them. Nice. Anyway. Ooh, I went through a donate plasma phase. Mm hmm After COVID. Over COVID. Yeah, you were yeah. doing the antibody thing. Yeah, man. They were paying me 
big bucks for my plasma post because I had I had first COVID. I'm on too many lists. I can't do that. <laughs> oh, really? They loved when I walked in. He's got antibodies. Give us your plasma. Oh. Uh, a hundred bucks a pop. Yeah. And you're helping, you know, and I, the and, community. And exactly. It's a cool thing. I know. Hey, now, the other one is, uh, uh, you, what is it, Sunday night? You're going to be oh, at the yeah. uh, karaoke show. Well, I've been at High Point Forever. every Sunday since he opened the business mm -hmm. 10, almost 11 years ago. Wow. Every Sunday. I was the first entertainment he booked in his building when he opened High Point. I was the first thing. And I've been there every Sunday since, unless they're closed for a holiday. Because they weren't open Christmas Eve, obviously. But yeah, I'm going to do New Year's Eve at High Point, which is my regular Sunday night. But we're going to try to blow it out a little bit more. Uh, uh, Tommy's putting out a free buffet. Nice. And there's going to be some champagne toasts at midnight. So, and there's no charge to get in. He's putting out a put. He's putting out a spread saying thank you very much for your business. High Point in Niles. Yes, on Route 422, <clears throat> the top of the strip in Tornado Alley. I'm going to pound the daylights out of this over the next couple of days. Appreciate for you. that. Uh, so look for on his Facebook. Uh, Simply Ed Productions on Facebook, and there's also a link on our website, which is uh, MrDanaStuff.com, and you can find Simply Ed there. Thank you very much. But, oh, no, thank you. I enjoy this so much, Dana. Well, I do, too. I do, too. And then, so we started off the show talking about it, and then um, before I start slathering you with love and affection and mm, all that stuff, slather. let's talk about midgets. So midget we're not, wrestling. We're not supposed to say. Man. Well, that's well, what they put on the posters. I know. Well, that's that, how they build themselves. That's the only time you can say midget is when it's and it's free. When it's midget wrestling, it's right. the only word. The only time in the only place midget in basketball, society. Mini kiss. I, yeah, but they don't call them midgets. No, it's just mini no, kiss. It's mini kiss. I that's love mini. I that's love mini kiss. We've. I've already been talking to them about. I said, listen, if this goes off the way you think it's going to go off this year, out of the rodeo. That next year, let's do mini kiss with the midget wrestling, oh, and he was into that. That's a fantastic. Afternoon. I think it'd be a, it'd be a great evening. I'm serious. Yeah, you and the sheriff have got to come to the rodeo. We'll plan. We're not going to do it this month because um, <clears throat> Craig isn't going to be there. It'll still be a great time, but I want to go, and Greg is going to be there. Excellent. But we're really in the full blown rodeo season now. Have you ever been to a rodeo? No, I have not. I would love to do that, dude. It is so much fun. I can imagine. Do I have to wear a cowboy hat? No. No, no, no. And we have a loge. A, a loge yeah. for rodeo? In a rodeo, yeah. And it's just, it, it basically, it's a it's like a a, a hay mile. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We're actually, the um, seats are hay bales. No, 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 no. We bring our own folding chairs. We generally okay. have, it, John, uh, when he comes, he actually puts out a spread and it's he like brings an cocktails. Ele it's elevated seating to get yeah. the best view. Oh, yeah. We get a great view. And nice. we're kind of, and then we, you get to see the crowd too. Nice. You get to see the groups of the Amish girls. The Amish girls come. I found out talking with Greg that um, the Amish girls, most of the ones that come to the rodeo in Fredonia are from Ohio. Okay. Which speaks why, see, over here, they're way more conservative. And these girls, they come and they sit in groups, usually a four or six, and they have on very, their traditional Amish garb, Amish, uh, Amish garb uh, with the bonnets and the whole thing. But they wear really nice coats. You could tell they're shopping somewhere, like at a okay. mall or a oh, boutique. Yeah. And they have, oh. every coat was oh, individual. we see them all the time here in our Niles Warren mall and, area. And they have matching purses or really nice purses. Sure. So it's like they're Saturday night going out. And so for them, it's kind of like going to Chippendales. <laughs> it's a riot. It's so much fun. Nice. Yeah. And then there's a lot of Amish that come and dress in English clothes. Okay. But, um, and a lot of English folks too. Oh, I mean, they, they seat about 2,500 right. people. Leave out the there. house in their clothes and they have a bag and yeah. they change before the, they go the into van, the rodeo. The van picks them up. All right. Yeah. And then they change in the van at oh. the rodeo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like they used to do down at Three by the River in the day. It's, yeah. They used to. Yeah. Absolutely. Behind they did that. Tully's. Yes. In they the parking did. lot. Yeah. Yep. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so much fun. Great. And, uh, and I grew up with, I mean, basically a farm kid and grew up with animals. Really? You, you didn't realize that? 
you, no, you're looking at me kind of funny. No, we've talked. I'm just. We've I, had. I just. I use. I would love to ride a horse again. As I'm getting older, I'm really wishing I could go back, but I won't. Uh, That'd be like putting a Jello mold on a horse. No, no, I, I can't. I can't see that, Dana. It, no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It would. It would. It, it, it would. The suck internal it, damage. And well, even if I survived getting my leg up and getting over it. No, I, I won't do it. But I used to. My sister still has. They. She never had kids. She and my brother-in-law, but they have horses nice. now. Living in Kentucky. Okay. Amongst the horses. I like that. Yeah. A nice life choice. And then you know my other brother, he hand carves carousel. Oh, his these uh, rocking horses. Oh God, he he is a he's yeah. got a gift. The, the stuff he produces are absolutely stunning. I yeah. love going on his Facebook page and seeing the work he does. It's absolutely amazing. It's beautiful. He it just, is. He just sent another one out for the holidays that was a blue, uh, with a blue base and blue blanket and stuff. It nice. was just beautiful. Mm. One of those dapple grays. And he's become pretty well known for that. Yeah, I have no skill set. I have a ping pong table. Yeah, and you have a ping pong table. <laughs> and we're going to learn how to play ping pong right. again. Uh, there's always pickleball. A lot of people playing pickleball. Yeah, but you know, my brother went and started playing pickleball. You know what he did the second time he went out? He blew out his Achilles. So, yeah. you know, it's like, and he's like a 50 year old man. He blew out his Achilles. That's why the ping pong, because, you know, it limits my movement. I'm, I'm not going to get into, you know, I'm not going to Forrest Gump this. All right, so I just want to be okay. able to stand and just, just hang. And I'm, yeah. If you blow out Achilles playing ping pong, no. you need to think about your life choices. I'm already concerned. <laughs> I am too. I am too. Uh, no more jumping the net. <laughs> the road, you know, talking about the road less traveled, I think we went the opposite <laughs> way, didn't we, Nana? <laughs> It was a good book. It, it was, was a, a good, good run. It was a good book and a good it run. It was a good run. I have no retirement, but I have stories. That's exactly right. And five people to listen to them. All right. That's right. Actually, no, the show's doing well. I hope people are listening. Yeah. I hope it catches up. Are you getting it. any comments? I get comments all the time. Yeah, I do too. And I'm glad people are enjoying our little reminiscence and, uh, you know, it, there's so much information we have yet to divulge oh, no, because this is just, it, the, of the lives we've lived. Honestly, I really consider this just to be practice at this point because we have a couple of other elements, and then when we take this out. Yeah, and, and then the uh, live stuff. And I mean, then, we're getting really close here to just deciding where do we want to go do this live. Right. There are midget wrestling. Well, that's that's going to be its own. That That's going to be its thing. Um we're going to have a cast of characters for that. I will tell you, the that. first time my wife will be hearing about this is on this podcast because I haven't brought it up yet. Well, <laughs> it's going to be a riot. And we do have a cast of characters coming. We're working on details of having a couple of them come down. and Some guests? Yeah. That'd be great. Because no, we have to have guests at Midget Wrestling yes. Podcast Live. Kyle, the two Kyles have already said we want to be there. Okay. John and Greg, of course. I mean, right. It was Greg that's saying, Dana, we got to go do this. Absolutely. And if they do it the way I want to, we're going to be on a wagon in the middle of the whole thing. Oh, dear God. So that the, the ring, the, the yeah. wrestling ring is right. our backdrop. Oh, dear God. That's the plan. Okay. And we'll be able to, people will be able to hear us there. Right. I mean, we're kind of going to be the pre-show. Okay. Oh. So <laughs> as people are coming. So that's kind of where I'm at with this. Okay. I look forward to it. Yeah. All right. Wonder if we'll need booster seats. <laughs> Dana. <laughs> well, we might have to bring some of them on as some. As, that's uh, believe me, we're work. I'm yeah. yes. I mean, that's kind of the whole purpose okay. of it is All to right. have this. I want to have this conversation. All right. I want to talk about my friend who has a thing and how often that comes up. Okay. And we could talk about your ex-wife and. Phobias, being afraid of. Oh no, my curl uh, wife. The curl wife. I'm sorry, yeah. I apologize. Oh yeah, don't don't can't even bring it up. Ooh, don't. I, mean, I might even have to edit that out. No, don't. <laughs> oh that part. Cheryl. Oh that line. Yeah, Cheryl. the X thing. Yeah, you need to, you need to I, fix uh, that. No, Cheryl. We might... She's fine. Except when it comes to uh, little people. We could. I could. I could get her a bodyguard for that. That would keep them away. I. I think she will not be attending that event. I will tell you that right now. You could not get her into that 
venue. I've got this image of us reenacting Joan of Arc and her being tied to a, and a then we pole bring her and in, little, and and all the little people dancing oh around her. Oh my god! Her. You want to destroy her? <laughs> I don't know why that just popped into she'll my head. She'll be in a mental facility, <laughs> and she'll never forgive me. <laughs> and low and slow will never happen again, folks. Check it out. The uh, Sundance Arena. It's in Fredonia, Pennsylvania. And uh, be watching my Facebook page and the website and all that stuff. I'll put information up. And again, Ed's going to be out this weekend, so look at that. And uh, very good. Yeah, look keep, forward to seeing some people. Keep listening, folks. There's a whole bunch of stuff coming. Happy New Year to you, my friend. And Happy New Year to you. This is so much fun. Twenty twenty four, I think, is going to be a lot of fun. I have not looked forward to a new year like I have this one, and, and a big chunk of that is because of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Love you, buddy. Hey, I'm thinking about doing a streaming show for New Year's Eve. I'm thinking about it. I've oh, never done it before. Really? I, it, Why not? I do this 70s thing. Would it be worth jumping on here and just seeing if I could do like two hours worth of disco music? Why not? Disco New Year. I love this. Okay. I, I, just a, I just did a 70s show where I counted down my version of the top 12 most requested rock radio tunes. Okay. And so I'm thinking about doing the same thing, but and now I'm starting to think about, how oh, it might be kind of fun to spend New Year's Eve just Disco. doing something. I love it. Yeah. She should be dancing. I don't mind yeah. it. The unedited edited version of Donna Summer's Love oh, to Love You, Baby. Well, yeah, but you have to play Disco Duck, too. Rick Dees. Rick Dees. Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year. I love you. The Penn, Ohio Backyard Bungalow Radio Show, brought to you by G&J Fencing.